Good morning, everyone. I'm Jim Jaquetta, CTO and co-founder of Vitovation. Today, we have my good friend, Matt Hughes uh, from Vnova. Uh, he's VP, uh, uh, Senior VP of Global Sales. And uh, tell us, give us a little overview, Matt, of what, we're, what, what uh, knowledge you're gonna lay on us today. Yeah, thanks, Jim, and thanks for Vitovation for setting this up. And it's important for us to, to, to have a chance to talk with you guys about Vnova. Um, we're, a, we're a UK, London-based company um, in, in the process of expanding as well. Um, what we do is we're a compression technology company. So we take, we own a bunch of um, patents around uh, video compression and image, image compression. What we've done is we've taken our library and perfected them to various aspects of the, the broadcast industry. Um, and we've got a, a few ways that we've, we've worked. What I'm going to go through today is show you some of those new technologies that are uh, being advanced through MPEG and SIMTI, and also a product that we have that offers a uh, encoding and decoding uh, server-based uh, system that we have in the market. Well, so so uh, some of your your technology you're going to present, Matt, is is kind of a, a new approach or a contrarian approach. So I put together this little little questionnaire to kind of see where customers are at. Uh, everyone should be able to see. Uh, uh, we asked the question, you know, what video codec or codecs do you use today? And uh, this is a multiple choice. You you it's multiple choice, but you can also pick. Uh, multiple things. So if you use uncompressed and, and JPEG uh, 2000, um, we'd love to hear from you. Just kind of see uh, where you folks are at today uh, in your IP uh, uh, codec, uh, video codec uses right now. So it looks like, oh wow, it's pretty evenly distributed here. Um, looks like uh, even except for JPEG XS. So here, let me let me um, put this up. Oh, what did I do? I hit the ah, oh, I hit the wrong button. Hold on, hold on. Um, close it. Now I share it. There we go. So there's the results. So uh, yeah, I guess that's not surprising. You know, a lot of people are still using H.264. <laughs> so uh, I I don't want to I don't want to spoil the surprise, but I think Matt might have uh, some enhancements to make 264. You know, take something legacy like that and 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 improve it. Uh, we got 265 and uncompressed, and then uh, the JPEG 2000 folks. Uh, Matt is going to present maybe some uh, some alternatives to that. So here, if I hide that, thank thank you folks for sharing. Uh, let me see. You should have control again, Matt. Okay. All right. Thanks, Jim. So so. Um... Some of the technologies that we've been working on specifically have been for MPEG and SIMTI. Um, we've got a new standard that's part of MPEG-5. MPEG-5 is actually a suite of products, and the part of that suite is called MPEG-5 Part 2 LCEVC. And with SIMTI, the uh, new standard is VC6 or SIMTI 21, ST2117. So I'm going to go through both of these. And uh, and kind of explain where we where we are today with these two technologies. So one of the things that's majorly happening, and you guys are see this every day, is in your typical home you've got people watching, people on Zoom, people on GoToMeeting, Netflix is running, Prime is running, Twitch, YouTube, somebody's on their uh, bicycle doing Peloton. We've got a lot of streaming. Well, I'm not, but some people are. So you've got a lot of streaming services happening with inside the home. So 65% of the worldwide mobile downstream traffic is, 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 is video. And 11% is Netflix. So, I mean, it just kind of gives you an idea. Whereas, where does that lie? It's, it's going through a massive strain right now, the internet. So, you know, how do we, how do we make that better? So in the U.S., you know, it's Netflix, which is at the top in, in, in uh, Europe, in the, in the Middle East, in Africa. You've got YouTube. In Asia, you've got media streamers. So all these are, are taking up all the bandwidth, you know, along uh, everywhere in the world. Viewers expect that high quality. So no matter what service you're on, you still want to be able to see your video. You want, don't want to see a spinning wheel. Um, all of their devices, everything that's being used, you want to have a, a good experience, a good quality of experience. So 
high demand, good good experience, which means typically in the past has meant using a lot of bandwidth. So how do we how do we cut that? How do we make that bandwidth smaller? And what can we do to offer our customers or or the general public consumers uh, a better experience? So low latency is also critical. So you want to be able to have real time video. You don't want to wait. You know the gut structure way of working can take a lot of uh, uh, time away, uh, making more more latency within the workflow. So how do you remove that? How do you make it so you don't have to have a massive gut structure with your streaming services? You know how does that how does that work? So our solution is LCVC. And of course, right now I've got a helicopter going over my house. It's not my helicopter. Okay, oh, here. <laughs> you guys will hear it soon because it's a chimney. Anyway, it's London. I don't know if you can hear it in the background or still pretty good. Still pretty good. Okay, so that's 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 impressive because it's, it's really loud. Oh, there you so, go. Now I hear it. I'll see. I'll see. <laughs> this always happens. LCABC is Low Complexity Enhancement Video Coding, which means we're taking a base codec, so an existing codec that you already have, like H.264, or could be HEVC, or could be AV1, and we're enhancing that. So we're making the enhancement on top of that existing codec. We start with a base codec, which is really important for this technology. That's how we differentiate from, from other players out there. In MPEG-5, the suite of MPEG-5 products is, this was important for that suite because we needed to make, we didn't want to make a new codec and MPEG, MPEG didn't want to have a new codec, yet another new codec out, out in the market. So what can we do with, with existing technology and new technology that comes up of how can we make that better? So, 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 so basically we could take that legacy uh, uh, AVC H.264 and and give it new life supercharge it as it were uh uh uh, uh, uh without having to, to to throw out that investment of h.264 infrastructure yeah if you if you put in a massive head in with encoders and you don't want to have to switch those out because you need a larger encoding farm at your head end you don't want to be able you don't want to have to do that you can keep exist what you've got existing today and then upgrade that workflow with this enhancement right. layer, this enhancement codec, which is really important. Well, another thing that so, I like too is that not every subscriber, so if it's like an OTT application, maybe some customers haven't updated their set-top box yet to support the new standard, they'll still get the base H.264. Uh, the, the secondary stream or the supplemental stream will just be discarded or ignored, right? So it-, it Exactly. It, so. It, it, so it, it, it scales nicely. Yeah, so if you've got the base codec, and the base codec, let's say, is doing your SD, SD version of your channel, and then your HD and UHD are, are, um, are added with, with this MPEG um, LCEVC, you would still have that base codec. So you still have a base H.264 that's being sent to your set-top box, the ones that haven't been upgraded or they, they yeah. weren't upgraded, yeah. or it could be somebody paying for uh, more prime uh, for prime content. That's an HD or an uh, UHD, you know, however, however somebody wants to, to work that. It's low complexity. So this means it reduces those processing costs of encoding on the codec. It's a software plug plugin update, as you mentioned. So it's a software plugin. We're not changing the hardware. This is specifically software for players and existing uh, devices. So, so the acronym again, it, it's low complexity. What, what, what does it stand for again? Enhancement video coding. Low complexity. Low, low, yeah, your audio is dropping out a little bit. Low complexity enhanced video codec. Enhancing video coding. Coding. coding, not a codec. Coding, not coding, yeah, coding. we want to we want to be sure this is. Oh, this it is, isn't it a is yeah, it's not a codec because it can't stand the, on its own. Okay, so it's enhancing exactly. coding. It's extra coding. code, not yeah. If the primary stream went away, this of course couldn't stand on its own, or the base Correct. stream. Got it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So solving this high quality streaming at scale, you know, when you're scaling up, reduce the network traffic without changing the quality delivering the highest quality and providing low latency. Those are those are keys. 
and the benefits for the viewers, for your for the consumer, killing that buffering wheel, delivering the highest quality, and having a fast startup time, you know, for those adverts for creating ad revenue, which is really important. For service providers, you know, you want to be able to beat the competition. You want to be the, the one that's not waiting for this massive gut structure to happen for your breaking news to happen or you want to be able to make sure your customers aren't churning going to another service because it's better quality you want to be able to reach everyone so those people that may be on a 2g 3g network and they're not yet on a 4g or they're not going to be on a 5g you still want to be able to target those people that are on 2g 3g 4g networks with still very good quality video and you want to minimize those operating costs you want to bring down your all packs you want to bring down your CDN delivery costs and lowering that encoding infrastructure that you would have to pay for for something brand new, which would cost a lot of money. Here's an example of 1.4 megabits per second. So on the left hand side, we have X.264. On the right hand side, this is LCEVC using X.264 as the base. So you can see. A, a, a big change within the quality so the quality of the sign the yard the yard lines here you can see difference in the numbers you can see differences where it starts yeah. to break up on the lines as well so this is one of the examples at, at 1.4 megabits per second so well, well, so, so what, what's what's happening here that that secondary stream or that secondary coding is adding some of the missing elements some of that missing detail back into the image correct exactly so we're taking that we're taking that and we're adding it and correcting it as well and improving it so we're making that improvement so the source the source is still a high quality source no matter how you, what you get the source the way that it degrades on the left hand side is different than how we adding we're adding the enhancement on the right hand side so so the enhancement is kind of like a, a, an error signal it, it's looking at the original video looking at how well that 264 is doing and then kind of coming up with a difference and then Correct. sending that as yeah. as the added information exactly and then okay. rebuilding it on the decoder on the other end that's so awesome where can lcv lcevc it's hard to say we yeah know. it's hard to say fast where, right <laughs> where can lcevc be used and we're you know we're looking at this for HD telepre uh, telepresence, so video conferencing. This is a prime example. You know, when we're talking to the likes of Zoom and GoToMeeting and, and Teams, you know, where this can fit in. Live sport, so providing UHD live sport at HD bit rates or lower, and providing those HD uh, uh, video at even lower bit rates. Immersive VR, uh, cloud gaming, smarter cities, IoT, anywhere there's a signal you know this can this can be used hyperscalers you know one of the things that we've seen working with uh, xilinx where we're now baked into parts of the uh, xilinx chipset xilinx manufacture and fpga which is part of encoders anyway so what we've done is we're able to provide a live our library our software library to xilinx and xilinx has implemented this on their fpgas which is which is great news that so so you you uh uh a uh, hardware manufacturer if they design a xilinx fpga into their video processing hardware they buy a license from xilinx or from you or how does that how does that mechanism work typically they'll buy they'll buy that from xilinx because they're buying the, the boards from from xilinx and it's okay. embedded into that board um, okay. It's normally transparent to to anybody that's you know would be buying an encoder at that point. So it's transparent. Gotcha. It's just another another uh, available encode um, coding platform or codec available on a drop down from the from the encoder. Gotcha. So video calling and conferencing, which I mentioned before, uh, very important for us right now um, to make to ensure um that, that that runs smoothly as well well i, I think the, your connection today could use a little lcevc right now you know we we uh, <laughs> probably you're probably uh, right uh, we're we're uh matt and i we 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 live in the video encoding space uh we have no control over go to webinar uh matt's video is looking a little soft today we're not sure if it's a bandwidth issue or what 
But uh, yeah, we need to get go to meeting up to speed on LCEVC. Yep, yep, definitely. <laughs> Uh, VOD streaming. So this can work on uh, file-based infrastructures as well. So not just on live video. This is also uh, implements can be implemented on saving file size for VOD content. You know the Netflix of the world, the Amazon Primes of the world. You know this is important for any VOD content or catch-up TV as well. Live streaming, which we've we've talked about. You know live sports. Uh, probably the best use case for us because this is you know live live coding live encoding the benefits you have more throughput increase uh quick and easy integration and we have a broad device support currently you know we, we're working on it, uh, making that larger and for a larger group this is supported on ios android uh, html5 web browsers um, some set top boxes as well that we've worked directly with so this this can be used uh, existing today, and we have those libraries available. We'll show you how you can um, you can actually see this in. in and and it's it. not is it is it complicated to get the SDK and the library up and running? You know what what uh, uh, how quickly can this be implemented? Yeah, we've we've packaged it, so we've packaged it into an SDK, and because it's software, we can it's it's written to be able to be used within the app level. So within the app itself, where you can download a player that supports this. So you're using, you know, a specific player, and we've got a list of players that you could you could make the integration with. Um, it, it really depends on what device you're working on and what library that you would need for this. But you know, at the moment, we're we, we're building those up, and where where we are in the process, and I'll get to this a little bit further. This is what we're talking about deploying. So we've got you know libraries for HVC, VV, uh, VCC, VP9, AV1, um, and then all of these devices, Android, Chrome. So it works with the current ecosystem. So you know that's how that's how LVC has been developed, and and we wanted to make sure that it was easy to access and easy to deploy. So how do you get LCVC? Which go, kind of go back goes back to your question. So you can ask your encoder manufacturer. So who, whoever is, you know, whatever your encoder is, go back to your encoder manufacturer and say, look, I'm interested in testing this. We will we'll make the, we have a, a libraries available. We've done some work with AWS Elemental, Heyvision, uh, Telestream, uh, um, Wowza, Avi West. You know, we've made, we've done a lot of work with these companies already. Some of them have some earlier versions of our library. Some of them will be taking on the new LCEVC as well. And there's a few on this list that already have. So we, we're, we've got this SDK available for, for all vendors, but do go to your encoder vendor and ask them for it and they can, they can get it for you. We have trial deployments as well. So if you wanted to test this, so we've got some trial deployments. If you, want to, if you want to take a file and see what it looks like as com in a comparison between uh, LCEVC with 264 and 264 on its own, we could do that comparison. You just upload the file, the, the, VOD, the VOD content. We can also, if we need it, we can take a live channel and put that into our platform. We've got a platform that's available on uh, iPhones. So we can take that and put it on a, a iOS device or an Android device or whatever you want. We can take a live channel and you can say, okay, I want to see what this looks like. I want to really bring my bit rate down to 100 kilobits per second and see what that looks like. Yes, we do do 100 kilobits per second video, and that's proven within our, our um, application. So you can see very low, uh, very low uh, data rates, very low bit rates using that. Uh, well, I, I know, I know you're working with our other partner, Avi West. They're they're one of the leading uh, global leading bonded cellular. Uh, providers and th their their existing HEVC codec is is very good at low bit rates. I think they can go probably lowest out of the competition. Implementing yep. your technology, they could go even lower. And then exactly. you have that secondary channel coming through to to add back some of that missing detail. So I think um, uh, probably one of the most challenging applications is streaming video through an unmanaged network like cellular. Yeah. Uh, it's much, cellular is far more unreliable than uh, the, of course, managed network is great, a fiber, 
Uh, satellite is pretty good. Sure. Yep. Public internet has its moments. I, I think you, you got a little bit of a bottleneck on your side, but then take it, you know, into, into the, uh, you know, public, uh, uh, the, the cellular network is particularly challenging. So I, I think Abby West is, is looking to implement this uh, to take their game to yet another level. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, my, my video is a prime example, but part of that is the issue. I haven't had a haircut in a few months. <laughs> well, the bar some of the barbershops are open here. I got a haircut on Sunday. Yeah. I, I, went, I went open shorter. Yet, so. I went real short because I don't know when the next time I can get one. Yeah, true. I got to do that. So that's LCVC. Um, the next that I want to talk about is VC6, um, uh, SMPTE ST2117. This is a different codec. So this is a full codec. This is intra-frame codec. So this is used in the contribution market. This is used in the professional video market. So it's available on a uh, 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 encoder and decoder pair that we, we manufacture. We have a package software, which is called P-Link, that sits on this server. Um, that, that server I'll get more information about. I'll give uh, through the presentation. So VC6 is very similar to what we were talking about LC, LCEVC. However, the, the thumbnail, the smaller resolutions is our codec, is, is, is VC6. So instead of using a different base codec, we're using, our, we're using a full stack codec, which is, which is ours. It's hierarchical, so you have a multi-scale image representation. We take uh, output upscale, add the residuals back for each layer, and then create a perfect reconstruction at the other end. So as I show this, there's a few ways that, that this works. You have has in, uh, inbuilt proxies, so I can get high quality proxies inbuilt in with each image. Single multi-scale archives, it increases, it efficiency increases with the resolution, and you have benefits of AI image analysis, HD cutouts from UHD. So you have different application efficiencies within, within this. Um, if I go a bit further into this, you know, how does this well, compare? Well, let, to let, let, me, let me ask you a question there, 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 Matt, that, uh, no, go, go one more, more forward one. You, you are, um, because you're you're taking the base codec, looking at the original, looking at how well the base codec is doing, and and continually analyzing and looking at the differences, scaling up, scaling down, that your technology actually learns. So take like sort Gulp of. for example. Um, yes. You know, panning over blades of grass, there there are certain challenges. Or I know in sports here in the U.S., it's always like. The orange basketball over a sea of faces, or yep. the baseball leaving the bat going over a sea of faces. That your your system, through use, through trial and error, through looking at the er looking at the original, looking at the end result, it's constantly improving. Is that correct? That's correct up to a point. So we've made the improvements on the version that's that's available today. So it's not learning as you use it more. So it's, it's already learned what it needs to learn. It's already, it's already learned what it needs to learn. We can make improvements on that. Um, but what the what the beauty of it is, is the way that it's learned, it's created efficiencies on what it's learned. So uh, so what it's what it's done in the past is we've we've taken um, AI information from from scenes and implemented that into the codec so that codec then is has implemented what that information that it, are, it already has and then replicates that on a uh, a basis of what is seen in video so well, well i think you've told me this before so like say that a sharp edge or a sharp transition in an image that can be yeah. challenging for uh for a codec there could be aliasing, overshoot, undershoot, some ringing even, that your AI then knows how to handle that type of edge. It's learned from, from it, that, that edge is in its library now, right? Lauren's pinging me right now. It's, it's trained more than, it's trained in advance more than learned. So it's gotcha. trained how to handle it rather it's than- It's been trained how to handle that edge. So then it takes less resources every time that, that challenging element in the picture comes up. It's, okay. 
the, yeah. the, 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 the knowledge of how to handle that detail, it's in its database. So that's what makes it so efficient. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So if yeah. we if we run through these, I know I'm conscious of time. So, um, you know, VC six versus JPEG two thousand. You know, what? How does this this differ from JPEG two thousand, which is very common in the marketplace? Both are are intra. You know, P Link is an intra only video compression solution, but the cost for JPEG two thousand for UHD is massive. You know, the bandwidth cost is is massive for JPEG two thousand. So, you know, network manufacturers can supply individual um, uh, modules for this compressor, compression. Um, you can migrate workflows from HD to UHD results in four times increase in bandwidth. So this is, this is really important where we start getting into the compression ratio of, of EC6 versus JPEG 2000. So provides the significant CapEx and OpEx savings when it's, when it's boxed into our solution. It can operate as an end-to-end -end solution. And I'm gonna go through a few of these and it can operate with the uh, existing network provisioning system. So if you, somebody is already using uh, NetInsight, Media Links, or Nevian, this can still be used within that network. We're not offering that network provisioning system. We're offering an input and output, an encoder and decoder for this. So what is what is P-Link? So we can take uh, fully flexible bi-directional links in any direction, you know, one to eight cameras. So one to eight uh, video feeds in, compress, and then do an output. That, comp that compression is VC6. It's flexible. We have what's called a dynamic multiplexer, which is quite interesting. Dynamic multiplexer is very uh, interesting for us is because it's similar to StatMux. However, we're doing this on a frame by frame basis in real time. So instead of looking at StatMux, which inherently is statistical in the past, we're doing everything in real time as it happens. So, or you have a StatMux and you're able to StatMux multiple channels together. In this, in our instance, we're doing this in real time, not on data that's already happened, you know, a while ago. So as each frame is being measured by the system, we're able to adjust the amount of bits, bit rate that is that is uh, need to be used for each for each channel. Also, another way that we can save on on bandwidth is what I'll also go a little bit more into is active bit rate control, and then we also have what's called a full frame mode, uh, the way that we're rendering the uh, interlaced content for a further further improvement. So active bit rate control. So let's say um, you're doing a live production, which you have eight camera feeds. Those eight camera feeds are going back to base. You're taking the eight camera feeds. You've got six in proxy here. Those six are being uh, 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 fed to a, a multi-viewer, and your producer is, is calling the shots. Those six cameras that are sat in proxy are only using 10 megabits per second. When you take one of those cameras and move it to preview, it will automatically bump it up to 60 megabits per second. So you're increasing the bit rate frame accurately. So this is happening in real time, frame accurately. You're increasing a 10 megabit feed to 60 megabits dead on the frame. And then if you want to go to program, you can change 60 then to 80 on that frame as well, the next frame. So we're able to say, I've got an eight camera feed, but I'm using a lot less bandwidth than using 80 megabits per second for all eight of those eight of those feeds. I can be very creative of how I use those. Granted, you're not going to be able to take ISO cameras and be able to say those, look, I'm going to feed those for recording if it's a, 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 a wide shot or whatever. Granted, you won't be able to take those as 10 megabits per second as a proxy feed, but if you're doing a pure live production, but nothing else is being recorded, and you're just taking into a, a preview and, and on air, then that's this is one well, way. Of, or, or, or in this scenario, you could record the full resolution at at the venue side if you wanted to. Um, exactly, would be another option. Yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, but 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 this is a great technique of prioritizing the feed that you're 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 maximizing the bandwidth so the director can get a good view of the preview what he's about to take. And then, of course, the program feed is is the top priority using the
the majority of the bandwidth. Exactly. Yeah, very efficient. Um, it's 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 quite a cool feature that we we have. And what I said before, bi-directional feeds. So I can say I I want four inputs and four outputs, four decode, four encode, or I can have six and two, or eight and one. You know, I can or sorry, seven and one. I'm doing a mess. Seven and one. I've got seven cameras heading back to base. And then I take my dirty feed that has all my graphics and everything else from from the production control room or from the production room. And so yeah, the, 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 the on, uh, for in sports, so the on-site commentators need to see the program feed coming from the studio. There might be commentators in the studio. So, so we throw it back to you, Chuck, so he can see what's happening. They can see the graphics. Um, um, no, th this is great. I, I, I see the uses for this. Don't forget, this is low latency. So we're not working with the GOP structure that you're working with in the OTT right. world. So you're seeing this within, you know, hundreds of milliseconds. Yeah, you know, all back intro, and forth. yeah, all intra frame. I mean, and typically this is done over a managed network, but you can do it over an unmanaged network like the public internet as well. Correct. You can, but you need to have something else in there. So you need to have something like Zixi. If you're doing this over public internet, you've got to make sure that you've got that connection. So you're not you you don't have the flexibility like you would have with the GOP structure that instant. You know, you do have to have a a, 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 you know, a fiber link between two areas yeah. going over yeah. public internet is dangerous. You know, we, we know yeah. that yeah. You know, the proof of it is today. Well, you know, well yeah. The, be... And then with unmanaged, then you need some, some buffering like the bonded cellular, you know, we, we typically exactly. need a, a second or more or, or eight tenths of a second plus uh, it's a different workflow. So then the commentators and the talent have to adjust when they're talking, not to step over each other. So, but then, but then in those instances where you have a fiber or a good telco connection, getting that latency down to a couple hundred milliseconds, th this is the way to go, correct? Yeah, yeah. And I'll go through a little bit more, some more examples uh, further, further along. So, just running through this real quickly: high performance inter contribution, flexible software. We've got a web-based GUI, um, NMS uh, integration with other companies. The appliance is robust. We've got hot swappable um, uh, fans. So a fan dies, you can pull it out while it's still running. The fan will keep the other fans take over. They start, they'll, they'll be spinning at the same time. Go and get your replacement fan, put that in. You know, all of these are hot swappable, no moving parts within it. Um, so minimize, you know, any risk that you have with the, with the, with the one solution. You can deploy in existing workflows, like we said before, working with Nevian, working with NetInsight, working with Media Links, whatever you're already working with, and you can support all these different workflows. So, is it a workflow where you're doing production one, uh, remote production, Remy's one day, if you're doing um, um, live event the next day, if you're doing UHD and HD, you know, you can have a mixture. You can choose, I want one UHD and four HD. Uh, uh, services to run at the same time. So it's it's very, very flexible. So the applications. So like I said before, live live event, you know, in Europe we call them OB and, and event productions, but these are your live trucks. So it's on a live truck where it's doing uh, UHD back to the studio, back to your, your video router. A single unit can transport a mix is what I said. And depending on the workflow can be, you know, one, the truck can be doing one, UHD one day, can we do an HD the next day, you know, however you want to, to manage it. Site to site links. So what we did with Sky Italia is they had uh, uh, links between Sky Italia and their telco provider. They wanted to take all their video feeds and feed them back and forth. So you had two different studios where those two were linked. Um, another site to site link that we just completed uh, last week is we're doing uh, all the video links for the World Health Organization in Geneva. So they have a link between the United Nations and um, and the World Health Organization between the two. So if you see Tedros and doing his talk in the in the uh, um, uh, the main theater that they have, that's running through a P link. Um, they also have links that they're setting up uh, this week with uh, Copenhagen. So they've got an office in Copenhagen. They've got seven regional offices that they'll be setting the P links up for site to site links. One of the problems that they had before they, they went with this 
is they didn't have, uh, they had problems with latency. Um, they had problems with uh, getting uh, quality video to see, be able to see, you know, charts and information that are being sent from site to site and being able to have a very clear picture. Right. So there was, there was one thing that this, this really helped them with, but they had these links, uh, private uh, um, fiber links between all the organizations. So it, it worked out very well for them. Well, in, in this example, like Sky TV, this is a link that's, the, those are links that are up 24 seven carrying exactly. critical programming. So having an enterprise grade chassis, like you said, with redundant power supplies, hot swappable fans, hot swappable power supplies, that, that's critical. They, they can't afford any downtime on this. Yeah, yeah. And you've had them up there running in your office, so you know, you've right. seen that they're pretty robust units. Yeah, no, they're, it's, um, it's a beautiful piece of hardware. Yeah, yeah. So the remote production, you know, this is doing uh, remote events, concerts, live sports, same thing, back to the studio. We can do six HD, two return videos, just as an, as an example. Um, the next slide that I'm going into is I want to talk about uh, our connection with AWS. So we released, re recently did a, um, a proof of concept and a test with AWS because one of our clients asked us to do this before they would uh, implement them. So a the beauty of AWS, massive organization, they've got a lot of uh, worldwide connections. And those connections can, can range from, um, you know, in basic internet connections to their direct connect, uh, which they have directly into their cloud. So we said, we, we'll take advantage of this. And what we can do is use P-Link in this scenario. So what we did is we took a P-Link with AWS and Zixie, and this goes into your uh, standard um, ISPs. So on, the, on one end, we did a UK to Australia and return feed. Along that feed, this is where you have your internet. Okay, it's a one gig link internet, but we also had to use Zixi in that instance to provide packet protection, to provide anything that's lost in the video signal when it goes from our Vnova office to their London data center locally. So this is your last mile, two miles, half mile, whatever it is. We also then took to test uh, customer office. This is customer office number one was actually AWS's Amazon office in London. And they have a direct connect, which goes directly into their data center, into their cloud. We then took the feed to a Sydney data center on the other side of the planet. Then back to the London data center, back through the Zixi local uh, internet with uh, one gig on a BT line. It's a local British telecom line to our office. And then AWS Media Connect to compare these as well on each end. And then we had an ISP or private uh, fiber, you know, to do a test to see what that latency was and see how that worked. We did a uh, did UHD feeds, and I'll, I'll show you some of the data that we, we got from this, but it was um, very low latency. I think we were around, you know, the 200 something mark uh, latency, um, but it was very low latency to do that complete, uh, to do a one way and, and back direction. So the benefits that AWS has connections throughout the world, it's a lease space, you're not always paying for a, 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 a space all the time. Media companies can piggy, piggyback an available infrastructure and AWS guarantees a network. So with that's Media Connect. So there's two products that they have. One is the Media Connect, which we also use with Zixi. Zixi is part of that Media Connect package. Right. Right. We have Direct Connect, which is the direct link. So that's a connect directly to that AWS network through local data centers, last mile dedicated comes in one gig to 10 gig. This is important here, because when I start showing numbers about what you can fit on a one gig and 10 gig line, it's right. very important. Right. AWS and, and P-Link are pretty much the only companies that can do this because we, we're down into, those, into the lower um, uh, bit rates where we can actually move this into lower, we can offer multiple services. So when I start showing the uh, bit rates and the 
uh, um, but but I should add, you say lower bit rates, but while uh, maintaining visual a visually lossless uh, experience. True, and, not, and the thing is, we're sacrificing if, quality for for bit rate. Yeah, exactly. But using something like JPEG XS or uncompressed or JPEG 2000, you wouldn't be able to use this necessarily in this with this uh, infrastructure right. that's available. Right. Right. Ultra low latency, hourly cost for ingest. So if you're doing something that's event based, very important. And then low cost per gigabit for for the output. So Zixi integration over that public internet, which we were talking about before, it's packaged. They've already packaged that for you. So you don't have a separate bill from Zixi, or at least you don't today. You don't have a separate bill from Zixi and AWS. It's all packaged. Yeah, right, so right, saw, right, right, right. And from what we saw, it's a it's a least a less expensive alternative to do it this way than just doing Zixi on it on its own. Um, it's compliant with uh, 2022 7 seamless packet protection. It covers the packet loss over that last mile. This is where it's really important. Where you need to say, okay, we can't just do this over public internet. It's that last mile that matters on either end. So you've got to make sure you've got that packet loss uh, protection in there. You're able, you're able to measure this and monitor it. Um, so it goes with the local data center instead of that public internet to the destination. And there's no additional charge for AWS for, for ingest, which is really important. This is That could be one thing that would be very expensive. So how much does it cost? This is completely from their website. So I'm not saying this is what, you know, this is what we found. And we, we get a bill. Prices may change. <laughs> Prices may change. There's a Your mileage may differ in the real world. <laughs> exactly. So they're available on their public website. You can, you can plug in these numbers yourself. You can have a look at them yourself, try out your numbers. This is what we did. We made a little spreadsheet here. We did a five hour, 60 megabits per second HD stream using Zixi as well to the AWS data center and direct connect on the decoder end. Granted, the, the direct connect connection was already there. We didn't pay for that connection. So that well, was already right. there. So somebody's got to say that you stole that, right? That, that, exactly. that, that, that needs that's, to be a little asterisk there. That, that's that's, that's, a, that's a AWS question they can answer. Right, right. You 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 probably need to be so, doing enough volume to to to, to warrant a, a direct connect. Yeah, data. But, I mean, it's it's possible, and you know the price for this, we paid ten bucks eighty nine for five hours of HD HD content for live production. You know that's I, nothing. You know? I I think I crunched that number too. I I I it came out to like less than twenty grand. If you ran it 24/7, you know, if that was a yearly sure. cost. But like you said earlier, that assumes you have the direct connect connection. If you didn't have that, the cost probably would be different or much more. Well, it depends. You know, you, you yeah. could still go to the Zixi uh, Media Connect solution, and you know, I don't know, you know, but that, those things all need to be tested out. Right. We were, we were right. going to say to anyone, oh, just do this. You know, it needs to be tested, and that's why we have, you know, equipment available. This can be set up. You need to test this and make sure that, you know, this is right, right for your organization as well. Yeah. Both, and, both, uh, both uh, I should add, you know, Vitovation is an AWS partner. We use AWS every day uh, with with Vnovo, with Avi West. Uh, Matt obviously is a, and Vinova is an AWS partner, so we can help you sort out these design and configuration uh, details for you. Um, you know, if if you have a good connection to the public internet at your two facilities, may not need AWS. AWS is usually good when you want to scale, when you want to go one to many. Um, yeah. But we don't we don't have to go through AWS. Uh, 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 necessarily, but we'll help you make those decisions for your particular yeah. use case, correct? Yeah, and we're not limited to AWS either. So, I mean, right. you know, we, we need right. to go through this and it needs to be planned out, especially if you've got important video that you're feeding, you want to make sure that it's right and um, what your connections are. And so we, we do go through that very, very much in detail. Um, 
post-production, you know, another thing that this can be used for color correction. We've my neighbor um, next door. He does he does um, effects. He works here in London. We have Shepperton Studios up the road. You know, we've got um, uh, situations where you may have a director or producer that's based in Hollywood. They want to make sure that they're seeing you know edits real time. They want to make sure they want to see color correction real time. All of that stuff can happen real time, and you could use P-Link for that as well. So you could take a UHD feed from one place to another and site to site, low latency. Does this look right? Is this edit correct? You know, this is another setup for the post-production market um, that we've that we've uh, used these for. So, what is what is the what are the rates? You know, the compression ratio. So we've got uh, different compression ratios. HD streams, you know, how much how much bandwidth do we use? So we're looking around 75 megabits per second. You know, give or take could be less than that in some instances. These are all approximations. Uncompressed would use 1.5 gigabits. JPEG XS would use 400 megabits. JPEG 2000 would be somewhere around 150. Uh, UHD streams were at you know 130 megabits per second. Uncompressed 12, 12 gig, JPEG XS 4 gig, JPEG 2000 1.2 gig. You start looking at that 1 gig line from AWS. The choice is clear of what you want to would want to go with. Yeah, I, I know, see a lot of zeros in those columns. It doesn't it doesn't fit in the pipe. <laughs> doesn't fit the pipe. So if you go to like typical latencies, we're around 100 give or take. It depends on the the way the wind's blowing. We're not going to say that we're perfect with. Uh, on the typical latency, we're somewhere around where JPEG 2000 is. That's granted. Uncompressed and JPEG XS are low, two two millisecond. We're we're well, somewhere around. Because there's, there's, such, there's so much higher bit rate that that's part of the trade off, you know. Exactly. It's if, a trade off. If you're not do, so, if you're not uh, uh, if you don't do a lot of compression, you're just sending the uncompressed packets through. Uh, yeah. Of course, that's going to be pretty low. Exactly. You know, and and we we know that, and that's that's not that's that's not why you would want compression anyway. So, right. so you, you use you want compression to make savings on your bandwidth, and also keep a good quality. So that's where that that comes in. There's got to be latency in there of some sort, and that's where it happens. We're not in the GOP structure area where you have multiple, you know, many seconds. Um, we're in the milliseconds, which is which is hundreds of milliseconds. Um, so you know your pipe sizes you know what can you do with 2160 p60 and 10 gigs pipe you know 76 here zero here two here eight with jpeg 2000. you start getting into 1080 i60 on a 10 gig pipe you know you're up to 166 feet you know there's so there's a big difference there of what it what it looks like you know um so in summary it's flexible, high high quality, um, can reduce your bandwidth costs. You know, especially for UHD, up to eighty percent. And it's used by you know some of the biggest names in the business. You know, we've got um, a large um, um, racing circuit in the in in uh, Europe that's currently using these. They just took some delivery. I can't say their name today, um, but they're they're just using these for the new uh, racing season that's supposed to. In three weeks three or four weeks so you know it's it is a new technology granted um we've got units that are available in that uh jim's got units that he can get to you if you got guys want to test anything we've yes. got units in the uk as well so we're we're covered globally um but if you do want to test these you know let us know you know p-link is a you have to test it you know there's there's no way around it you have to see you know see it and use it and feel it and with everything yeah, going on, a, 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 great, a great test would be to to send a video from uh, a customer's uh, master control to to our lab here in Southern California, and then out to the UK and back, kind of do a round trip around the globe. Um, uh, whatever you want, or if you have a New York and LA facilities you want to connect together, uh, we 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 welcome uh, a, a demo. I think you guys will be amazed. So. You go back to that chart where you can't get the JPEG 2000 to fit through the pipe. So some customers will say, oh, well, 
I, 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 I'm doing uh, H. I'm not ready for 4K. So as you said, Matt, that the, the numbers look really, really good. Uh, 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 the compression is amazing. Com you know, the more, the higher the resolution, the more efficient your compression is. Uh, the yeah. 4K savings is a no-brainer. But even a, a 50 percent, 30 percent savings for HD. Uh, you can fit that many more videos in the pipe as that chart showed. And, yeah. uh, you know, bandwidth is, is not free, right? You know, yep. the, that's, the, that's the key. Yep. You Definitely. know, and, and, and being able to push more content. So, uh, most of the questions I've gotten, Matt, are uh, about, you know, when, how do I get the, how do I get the PowerPoint deck? So, uh, please, please send me a copy of the, of the final deck. I will, uh, uh, I'll, what I what we do is we'll post the recording of this session uh, in our blog, or you go under the resources and then webinar uh, section of our website or the blog. Uh, the recording will be there. Uh, you will be able to download the slides. We even transcribe our our conversation here if you'd like to read uh, what we talked about today. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Um, seems like Lawrence Lawrence must have a question for me he likes to quiz me on the spot he does uh let me see I don't see anything from Lawrence uh, oh, no, oh, no. There, there were a few people that want to uh, download um the um uh the presentation so 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 Matt Harry, thank Harry, you so Harry, I've got I've got oh, just Harry's uh, one of my guys is from this side and Worth mentioning, LCEVC doesn't need upgraded chips. It will fit on a, to any, to any of today's kit, which we mentioned earlier as well with uh, LCEVC working well, on. Right, you don't uh, need a chip because it's software-based, right? So so it works around your existing chipset. Yeah, yeah, he um, wasn't listening. Gotcha, gotcha. No, that, that, that's an important point. And, uh, okay. you know, we encourage everyone, anyone to reach out to Vitovation. Um, do you have like a contact slide? I, I have a slide up. Right here, I've just, just put it up. You got that? No? You got it, can you see it? Uh, no, it's still, oh, there we go. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah, so we encourage you to reach out to Vitovation. Of course, you can reach out to, to my colleagues. You can reach out to Matt or VNOVA directly. Uh, we're, we're, uh, a close partner with VNOVA, uh, we're distributing, supporting the product here in the U S we're going to be your first line of support. As Matt mentioned, we have, uh, quite a few, uh, systems in our inventory ready for demo. Uh, we encourage you to take a look at this technology. I know some of our customers will put it through their IP codec analyzing equipment. Uh, a common thing I've seen with this tech is people think they have the input and the output swapped on their analyzer. What? The quality can't be that good. It's not possible. Something must be some glitch. No, it really is that great of a codec. The, it, it is, you know, visually lossless. Um, it, it's really something you, you should try. Um, so Matt, I, 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 thank, I thank you for today. I thank you for laying yep. some knowledge on us today. I hope everyone out there is staying uh, safe and healthy. Um, I, I mean, I, I was looking forward to seeing some people at, at IBC this year, spending some time in the VNOVA yep. booth. That unfortunately is not happening. Uh, NAB New York is not happening. So uh, we encourage, um, at Vitovation, we use GoToWebinar, we use GoToMeeting, we can do uh, an engineering discovery call where we get Matt, some of his engineers, Vitovation, some of our engineers on, on the call, and collectively we'll design a system that will solve any hiccups you have in your workflow, solve any of your challenges, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you folks soon. Yeah, same here, and thank you. Thank you, everyone. And um... And as, as, as Jim said, uh, as soon as I can get on a flight back to the U.S., <laughs> my home, uh, be great. But uh, that's not going to happen, I don't think, anytime too soon. But we, we don't know yet. Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah. 
but yeah. but we'll let technology in the interim we have product here you can get support electronically we can do a go to meeting so uh uh we're we're here to service you um and uh thank you so much thanks again matt uh thank your colleagues for putting together this 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 presentation and uh we try to have the recording and the transcription <laughs> and the and the powerpoint uh online within a couple of days uh at the latest you should see it by early next week so thanks everyone have a good rest of your week thanks for tuning in and uh, we hope to hear from you soon thank you matt yeah, thanks everyone thank you bye-bye